I have my, my library that I'd like to share with the, the 12 folks that are with us right now. So ready awesome. to go. Perfect. So we will get started. I expect we'll have a few more people joining us. Um, and as I mentioned, I know I told Dr. Schwartz, we had um, quite a few people register, but I know if, if they're like me, some people register for programs just so they can get the recordings after, um, even when they know they can't join. So welcome everyone. I'm Elise Washington. I'm a project manager supporting Missouri Healthy Schools. Missouri Healthy Schools provides students with lifelong advantages built on early positive health behaviors um, that improve conditions for academic achievement. You can check out mohealthyschools.com for more info. I dropped that link in the chat. Today, we're super excited to have Dr. Lauren Shores with us in part three of a six part webinar series on topics related to health and well being, with a special focus on health and well being during COVID. Dr. Schwartz is a clinical neuropsychologist who provides neuropsychological assessment with a particular interest in patients who develop um, abnormal cognitive conditions from neurologic disease, neurodegenerative disorders, or psychiatric disorders. And she also provides group psychotherapy. She's an assistant professor um, at St. Louis University and is the director of neuropsychology over there. This episode will cover um, the um, maintaining your mental health and well being during COVID. Um, we are recording today, and you'll be able to access that later. We'll put it on um, our YouTube channel as well as the Missouri Healthy Schools website. Um, at Dr. Schwartz's request, I will make each of you a Zoom panelist so that you can actually have the option to turn on your video and microphone um, so you can discuss and ask questions. Um, if you're like, um, no, thank you, I wasn't ready for video today, you're welcome to leave it off, and you can still drop questions in either the chat or Q&A boxes. Thank you and welcome Dr. Schwartz. Oh, thank you. Please do call me Lauren. It is truly an honor to get to spend this time with you guys this morning. So um, yes, if, if you're in your jammies and you don't wanna show yourself, that's totally cool, I get it. Um, before we get started, what I'd like to say, it's just an honor to spend this time with you. And I want this to be, I mean, I have a formal presentation that we're gonna do, but I want us to, if you have a question, if there's something that you wanna talk about, just stop me and let's just do it in the moment. Because if you're anything like me, I, I'm like, oh, what was that what I wanted to ask that presenter 20 minutes ago? I don't want you to have that feeling, okay? So give me a moment, I'm gonna go ahead and screen share and I'm gonna get my slides up. And I do have, um, you know, show and tell today. I got my stack of books that I really like that I'm gonna put up. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this slideshow going here, okay. So today, what I really want us to focus on are talking about tips for surviving quarantine and the virtual life. And I know while technically like the formal quarantine, if you will, is behind us, most of us are still living aspects of quarantine in our daily life to some degree. So here's what I want us to talk about today. This is our goals for today. And if you have other goals that you want me to go through, shout them out to me. I'm happy to, to talk about anything really. So one, I just kind of want us to put it out on the table, talk about the, the new struggles that we're facing during this pandemic. And then we're going to go through some basic tips to how do we get through this? And then we're going to have open discussion. I have some discussion points that we can talk about together. And then I'm just going to briefly review um, the upcoming talks that I'm going to give. I'll do my show and tell at the end. And then if there are some topics that you guys are particularly interested in, um, I'll make note of that and make sure that, um, that I uh, cover that potentially in some webinar or other format. So this slide is kind of like, yeah, Lauren, I know, but I want, I want to kind of just really verbalize it and put it out there. We really have unique challenges right now. Um, some of us are working from home. And some of us are live and back in person. So there are unique challenges with that. Social isolation, virtual life. And I put these in red because these are the ones that really we're gonna, the tips and kind of tricks that I'm gonna talk about with you today are kind of honing in on, and on those three. But I mean, the, the other challenges that we're going through right now, family members, friends that have lost jobs, businesses that have gone under, um, you know, fear of the unknown. When do, when am I going to get my vaccine? If I, am I going to get the vaccine? What are the side effects going to be like for me? Um, 
And I, and I think it's really important too that uh, we recognize that we are all grieving to a certain degree, uh, grieving how life used to be, grieving how things that we may have up and coming in our lives are not gonna be how we plan them to be, um, grieving loss of friends, loved ones. So death has touched many of us. Um, and of course the list could go on and each of you I'm sure have very unique challenges right now um, that, that we could put up here. Um, but certainly all of us are going through this. And uh, I think that this is such a, a challenging time. I never thought as a, a professional that I would be living through a pandemic in which we all globally are experiencing the same stressor that none of us are untouched by this really. You have a new mantra that I would really like you all to focus on. And I say this to myself every day and I think it's really important for us to focus on that it is okay to not be okay. You know, if you have bad days, if you were not your best, if you said something snarky and you didn't mean it, it's okay to not be okay. I love this, um, this is stolen, I cannot take credit for this, but I love this slide. It's okay not, I know you're all educators, so this one you probably got in the bag. It's, not you probably know how to homeschool, but you know for for a lot of working parents that don't know how to homeschool their children, it's it's okay for them not to know how to do that. Um, it's okay to not know how on earth to work from home. It's okay if your kid has a tablet and they're spending a little more time on it. Uh, maybe they got a tablet now and you used to be a no screen house. You know, um, it's okay not to have a perfect schedule and just to sort of fly by the seat of your pants. Um, it's okay to not feel magically inspired every day. Um, this is not normal and we all really need um, to, to be kind to ourselves right now. The, the magic word is grace here, I think. We all need to give, it's grace directed inward towards ourselves. Um, grace that, gosh, I was a couple minutes late today or, oh my gosh, I left the coffee pot on, you know, grace for ourselves, but also other people. I find that even kind of small things that used to maybe irritate us before are more catastrophic now. You know, I think everyone, it's like our, our fuse for what uh, kind of gets us angry now is, is shorter because we're all dealing with this elevated level, basal level of stress that we weren't dealing with before. So I kind of think about, gosh, my, my colleague really, you know, made me angry today, but I have to think about, gosh, their gas tank is not full either. And God, I don't know what they're dealing with today, you know, now more than ever. And so that also helps you personally too, to sort of diffuse your anger at the situation too. So this is a goofy picture because I also mean grace from working from home. This did happen to me. Uh, this is obviously not an actual picture of myself, clearly, because I'm not a redheaded, maybe 13-year-old girl, but I'm going to tell you a funny story. I um, was working from home, seeing my patients via telehealth, and I had my door locked perfectly, but I do not know how my cat ninja'd in, and it was like in slow motion. He ran up to my screen and showed my poor patient his backside, and it was like, there was nothing I could stop it. I was like, ah, ah, like you see in an action movie. But this is where Grace comes in. You know, I said to my patient, gosh, that was really embarrassing. If you were in my clinic office, certainly you would not just have seen my cat's butt. Um, and I'm, I'm very sorry about that. And we both used it as a moment to chuckle. Um, my friend uh, is an educator and, and she's teaching from home and she's also homeschooling her children. But in the middle of uh, her lecture, uh, her child spilled a glass of water on her laptop and she had to say to her students, middle school students, uh, guys, uh, my kid just dumped a glass of water on my computer. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to continue our education this morning. So this is what I mean by grace. You just, we have to accept that these kinds of things are gonna happen to us and just deal with it, roll with the punches. My patient certainly did and so did I, but I will never forget that a patient saw my cat's butt. So let's talk about some tips for getting through this together. And 
you got this. You are resilient. I promise you, even on the days that you don't feel that you are, you're on this call right now with me. We're having this time together. We're learning together how to cope with this. So the number one most uh, important tip, and, and I'll give you a little bit of background. I did a lot of this when we were in quarantine with the entire medical school. So I was running support groups where I would have 100 employees on, on the call together. Um, and so these are some of the things that we talked about. And so I've had feedback from people that use some of these strategies so uh, and said that, that that just did help them. So the first thing that I think about is maintaining a schedule, um, whether you are working from home or if you're in the office. I think that that gives us a sense of normalcy that's very important during this time and sort of that dependability is helpful. Um, making sure that this schedule that you have for yourself includes a break. Um, I remember when this all started, I was just sitting, I don't know about you guys, I was in front of my computer on Zoom meetings for 12 straight hours. And I thought at the end of the day, did I stand up today? Um, did I, and I, I don't mean to be like inappropriate, but it's true, like did I go to the bathroom today? These are things that like totally went out the window. So get out of your chairs, you know, um, that is so important. Um, and, and if you're somebody that needs to write the schedule out, which I was, I had it on a whiteboard for myself, you know, that was very important. And it also sort of at the end of the day made me feel like, oh gosh, okay, I actually did accomplish some things. Um, so the scheduling is super important. Another thing is adequate nutrition. I think that when we're stressed out, I don't know about you all, um, I think there's a spectrum, like we're on one, one end or the other. We either kind of shut down and we don't eat and drink or we go to food for comfort. So making sure that we're, we're adequately eating and hydrating ourselves and as much as possible making healthy food choices. I am totally calling the kettle here with this one. I am guilty of not drinking enough water. Before this talk today, I wanted to make sure I fact checked myself, but um, this is how much the National Academy of Sciences and, and a bunch of other people with higher brain power than me um, is recommending that we drink a day. Now, certainly um, based on your own health and medical conditions, that may vary, but I mean, for, for me as a female, I, I am not drinking 2.7 liters of water a day. So I'm really trying to be mindful of that um, I usually don't make New Year's resolutions, but for me, uh, water is a big one because when we're dehydrated, we're not, our, our brain doesn't function as well. Uh, our bodies are more achy. So for me, that this is, this is a big one. And I, and I hope that you all have some water in front of you right now. Another important thing is to keep up physical activity. And here's the thing. I, if, if you're anything like me, I woke up this morning at five o'clock and I was like, do I really want to get on that elliptical? No, but it's important to do it even if, if we don't want to. Um, I'm, so my specialty is neuropsychology, uh, as she mentioned when I was introduced. And when I really think about brain, cognitive brain aging, and I hate to tell you all this, our brains actually start to age at age 28 to 30 from a cognitive standpoint, that's kind of when it starts. So I'm thinking always about what kind of lifestyle things can I do to keep my mental acuity as sharp as long as I can. And exercise has shown to be really the most important thing uh, from a lifestyle standpoint. So really what is recommended is 150 minutes a week of, of cardiovascular exercising and, and you know, some strength training in there. And of course, you know, some folks are like more intense this, with this than others, but you know, as long as you're trying to get that in, I think it's really important. The other aspect, not only um, just from a physical standpoint with exercise, you know, is that there's a lot of literature in the mental health realm that um, any kind of exercise really has benefits from a, a anxiety and depression management standpoint. And I can tell you that um, in, in some of my initial therapy sessions with patients, that's the, one of the first things that we're working on. Because oftentimes when people are depressed and anxious, they physically are shutting down. And we talk about activity scheduling. Um, and really, if, even if it's just walking around the block or getting themselves, you know, to go out and get the mail, those small kinds of things are 
they're really important. Another thing that is, uh, I think, kind of especially initially like last March, I feel like flew out the window for a lot of people is a normal sleep schedule. Um, I talked to a lot of folks that like started to suffer from insomnia for the first time in their lives because, you know, when when we're working from home, maybe uh, the get up time is different and the bedtime is different and it sort of just completely got out of whack, but really trying to stay on a sleep schedule is very important. So getting up at the same time and going to bed at the same time every night. Um, so when we look at the research, the National Sleep Foundation really is telling us that we're supposed to get really, you know, seven plus hours of sleep a night. There used to be this sort of, you know, myth that individuals over the age of 65 didn't need as much sleep. That's, that is absolutely not true. Um, still over the age of 65, we're still needing seven to eight hours of sleep of night in order to function um, you know, at our best. We also have to think about, are we staying connected? And, and that's so hard right now from a social standpoint. You know, how, how are we um, engaging with family members, with friends? Um, I think it's, it's so important to, to do this in any way that you're most comfortable with. You know, I, 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 I work with older adults, like I said, so some folks are not as big about, you know, FaceTime and Zoom and, and Snapchat and all that stuff, but, you know, making sure you're on the phone with someone that you care about. Um, and, you know, getting creative with Zoom meeting with friends, you know, all those kinds of things um, is really important because we know, and I, when I talked about the schedule thing, you know, the schedule includes the breaks, the physical exercise, but it also really should include social connectedness. Um, and I think, you know, when we're stressed, and, and that's kind of the first thing to go. And I'm really guilty of it too, is that, gosh, when did I talk to my friend the last time? You know, has it been a few days? And, and sort of keeping track of those kinds of things I think is very important. I love this one. Uh, dress for the life you wish you had, not that the one you do. So I know I said at the beginning of the call, I understand some of you might be in your jammies and that's still cool. So please don't feel like I'm calling you out here because I'm not. But, you know, if, if we're working from home, um, there is something to be said about uh, how we dress. You know, so there's a lot of, there's been some interesting literature done in depression. If, if a person with major depression is staying in like sleepwear all the time, um, it does exacerbate their symptoms. So even if you're working from home, um, it, it gets you in the mindset. Um, you know, I, I have some colleagues that like will dress professionally on top and then maybe have like, you know, running shorts on or leggings on the bottom. And I guess that's a, that's an acceptable compromise, but you know, your, your, your state really does affect, you know, your mood in terms of kind of what you're wearing and such. So dress for the life you wish you had. Another thing that is so important is getting outside. Um, so especially now, I know it's winter and you can unmute yourself and say, Lauren, it's cold, you're out of your mind, I'm not going outside. But there's a, really a benefit with vitamin D to this. One in five individuals have um, low vitamin D. And so we know that sunlight can give us boosts in, in vitamin D levels. But the, the thing here is that vitamin D, low vitamin D is linked with symptoms of depression. So, you know, I think that it's important to, if, if, you're, if you're interested in supplementing in terms of taking supplements, you know, to talk to your primary care physician about it, but there, it is very important um, just to, to try to get sun on your face. I know I'm looking out my window and I'm like, Lauren, that's really ridiculous because it's so cloudy today, at least where I am. But, you know, just even if it's stepping out the front door, taking a fresh breath of air, uh, it's really important, but I want your vitamin D levels to be on your radar, all of you. It's very important. Um, in fact, actually, pediatricians are suggesting now because children are not outside as much playing as they used to be, that even infants are um, being requested to start supplementing vitamin D. I have a one-month-old at home, um, and my pediatrician is having me supplement her D levels as well. So I, I think my, my, my last webinar, I talked about this uh, at length 
which is how do we, tip number eight is watching over our mental health and the mental health of those around us. And so, you know, knowing when we need to get help. So knowing the signs and symptoms of depression and anxiety. And that's kind of what I talked about in my last webinar, but, you know, sadness, not wanting to get out of bed, disinterest, um, just feeling like it's not worth it anymore, or sense of dread, fearing everything. You know, those are some signs that you, you may need to reach out and get help. And I, and I really feel now more than ever, we're each other's keeper right now. You know, and if you see a family member or a friend or a coworker that you're concerned about, um, it's, a, it's a hard conversation, but you know what? I think it's one that we all have to have. Like, you know, gosh, you don't really seem like yourself. I don't mean to upset you, but is there anything I can do to help you? I mean, that's how I've approached it with colleagues. Um, the good thing here, um, you know, I have this little cartoon up here because I think a lot of us, um, there's still a stigma associated with mental health. You know, if, if I talk to a therapist or if I go to a psychiatrist, am I going to be judged? Are people not going to understand if I have depression? You know, will this hurt my career? I don't want people to pity me. I'm scared it will define me if I get a diagnosis. You know, all these things uh, could be floating around in our heads if, if, and, and are barriers for us to getting a mental health treatment. But here's the good thing. If there is a silver lining to the pandemic right now is that more and more services are virtual. So um, I know here at St. Louis University, the Department of Psychiatry, all of the psychiatric visits are on telehealth. So you don't even have to leave your home. You don't have to sit in a waiting room at a psychiatric clinic. You know, and you, you know, you're on your computer and you get the same quality of care from a mental health professional. You can get medications obviously prescribed to you in that way too. And a lot of therapists now are doing telehealth. So I think access to mental health now, um, if that's one thing that we can say is a good thing that happened during the pandemic, it's much better now. Um, and the good thing is that insurance carriers are still covering telehealth appointments, which is which is great. Um, you know, I I love this thought, and and it's hard, but it's emotions are powerful, and they're not, but they're not dangerous. So we don't we don't want to suppress how we're feeling right now. You know, if if you're having a particularly down day or an anxious day, like I said, it's okay to not be okay. We really need to embrace these feelings and, and use some of these tips and tricks that I've shared with you to sort of to help ourselves. So in terms of what I would suggest, if you yourself or your friend or colleague or, or loved one is, um, is experiencing mental health difficulties, the first line of defense sometimes might be to talk to a primary care doctor. Um, I put St. Louis Behavioral Medicine Institute's website up here because that is a big group of therapists that are doing all um, telehealth right now, which I think is really great. Um, and then this website that I have on here, psychologytoday.com, is great because you can put your zip code in there and it will give you all the therapists in your area. Um, and then they also will give a little description of the therapist and it usually will say what insurances they take. Um, so these are all some great resources. So I, I wanna take a moment to just kind of let you know a, a little bit about um, future talks. So um, on February 17th, we're gonna talk about different relaxation techniques and we'll practice them. And then in March, uh, we're gonna talk more specifically about sleep hygiene. And then in April, we kind of have a, a one that's sort of open to discussion, you know, what, what, what needs there might come about and, and, you know, it doesn't have to be decided anytime soon. And, and you know, if you guys uh, have thoughts in the future, you can certainly get in touch with us via email too for ideas. But I really um, wanted to keep my part of this roughly around 25 to 30 minutes, which I sort of still, I mean, I think I'm at 25 minutes right now, which is good because what I found when I did these meetings before in other communities is that the space is important to allow you guys to talk and share ideas and ask me questions because really this is your opportunity to have direct access to a mental health professional to talk about things that you wanna talk about. Um, 
And so, but I also want to, uh, I have talking points that we may go through too, if we have like the, the crickets situation, which crickets are okay. As a therapist, I deal with silence all the time and I'm totally okay with it. But um, I do want to show some books. So um, one book that I really love is The Mindful Path to Self-Compassion. We are very mean to ourselves. If we monitor our self-talk over a given day, we'd be like, oh my God, I would never talk to anyone like that. And no one would be my friend. Um, I love this book. It's really great. Um, and I love this. They suggest, uh, it, I'm not going to go through all this because you all fall asleep on me, but there's loving kindness meditation, which are really cool. But I, I love this phrase that, that I do use with myself and it's very helpful. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. I really love that. So I'm going to say that again. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. I love that mantra. I just love it. Now I'm going to just go through my library. I love the book called The Wise Heart. This is wonderful. This is a book on Buddhist psychology um, by uh, Jack Cornfield. And it is just wonderful. And I promise it's not hippy dippy. There's just really great, I mean, it's a little hippy dippy, but I'm a little hippy dippy myself. But um, there's just really great things in here about learning about um, self-kindness, compassion, meditation. Um, and if you have any interest in Eastern philosophy, it sort of is, includes it in a way that's really understandable, which I really like. Um, Mindfulness-based stress reduction is sort of a, uh, it's been around for a while, but it's really being used a lot more and more um, in group settings and such. But Bob Stahl, um, his last name is spelled S-T-A-H-L, has this awesome workbook, a mindfulness-based stress reduction workbook that I really like because it teaches us things like mindful breathing, mindful eating, meditation, um, allowing ourselves the gift of rest. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how many of you allow yourselves the gift of rest, you know, downtime, real downtime. So this is a great book. And the cool thing about this is that I hope some of you still have CD players, but there is a, there is a CD play on this that comes with 21 different guided meditations, which is really cool. I really love the self-help workbook, Mind Over Mood. This is on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Great for helping with depression. It's really great. It really teaches us how to change how we feel by changing how we think. So it's really based in cognitive behavior therapy. There's been well over a million copies of this sold. Therapists work through this book with their patients. It's fantastic. And my final one is, if anxiety is really what folks are struggling with, um, Edmund Byrne has the Anxiety and Phobia Workbook. Love this one. Again, Amazon for like 12 bucks. Fantastic. Um, and I'm sure there's a way we can post all my library in some capacity in the future. But so I, I want to pause first to see if, um, if folks have questions at this point, if you wanna have some dialogue. Like I said, I, I do have some talking points, but I, I just wanna pause for questions, comments, sharing, whatever you want. Anything that folks wanna talk about. I'm gonna take a sip of tea. I'm a Zoom drinker. I don't know if anybody has watched any of those like snippets about identifying your personality on Zoom. I do drink tea on Zoom. Lauren, this is Elise. Um, I'll share one. I'd love to add to that list. There's a book called Burnout by mm -hmm. Emily and Amelia Nagoski that, um, I like, it, to, it sounds very cheesy to say it changed my life, but it changed oh, no. as far as, um, and it focuses on, it's a feminist perspective on unlocking the stress cycle. Um, and it was, I'm going to uh, write this down myself. Cool. What was the name? What was the name of the book? Burnout. Burnout. What's her um, and it's by Emily and Amelia Nagoski. Uh, they're twins, they're sisters. So they- Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. I'm always looking for new resources. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. 
Um, and uh, I see I, folks are asking if we can post the reading recommendations as well yeah. as the two websites that were on your slide. Um, yeah. so what I will do, um, if you can go back to the two websites, if those were in there. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Sure. And then the reading recs, folks, I will get the list of all of those. I'll email them to you and you can sure. kind of disperse them somehow. But you I can email them out to registrants. That's great. Yep. So, um, uh, you know what I could do? Was Were there other chats or something? My screen just kind of like flashed at me. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Here. I can. I see them. Oh, yeah. Here we go. I got them now. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was it. I think that that covers. I, that covered. Yep. Was it. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. So um, that, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, well, one thing I was going to ask, because um, this is something I feel like that comes up a lot too, as far as accessing, I'm a social worker, um, and we recommend, you know, the mental health support so often, but um, do you have recommendations for like the affordable resources for people who are either underinsured or uninsured and not sure that they can afford therapy? Yes, absolutely. The biggest one, honestly, I can tell you right off the bat is actually our psychiatry department here at SLU um, because our residents, uh, in, so they're already MDs, but they're in their residency to become psychiatrists. As a part of their education, they, are, they do psychotherapy um, and that is free of charge. So um, when I uh, email you the reading list, I will get the number to call for therapy for SLU care. But then I will also give you um, a recommendation for a couple of, um, there's a, the, the St. Louis University Graduate School um, has a counseling center that you can go and get therapy for like five to $10. It's on a sliding scale fee. And they are also doing telehealth. So I will also include that phone number. Um, as well. Great. No, that's perfect. Because that's, I mean, five to ten dollars is even much lower than like an average private therapist would provide on a sliding scale. You know, that's much more accessible. Oh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. I'm going to see if I'm, I think. All right. So here we go. Let's see. Uh-oh. I lost. I had to click on my slide. Okay. So I'm probably dating myself here, but this is an old Saturday Night Live. This was one of my favorites. This was Mike Myers, Coffee Talk. So um, I'm going to give us a few topics. And you know what? If, it, if you guys, it's okay if you don't want to talk. But I, and if you're silent, I want you just to think about these things to yourself and maybe, you know, um, answer them to yourself. And then I'm going to embarrass myself and Elise and I'll make, you know, I'll make us answer them. How's that? Um, so is anyone feel comfortable sharing how they were resilient during this time? You know, call yourself out for something positive. I think we, we tend to focus on how, when we screw up, when we didn't do it well, but like I have heard some amazing things on some of the calls that I've been on. Like someone I uh, talked to was like never done art and it was a physician and she's like, I've just started painting. I look like I'm in preschool, but I'm painting. So, <laughs> Those kinds of things. I'll share with you all. This is historical. I raised chickens. So when I, um, I would have uh, sessions with them. So I'm the, so the assistant dean of the medical school. So I would have like meetings with the classes. We have big classes, 175 students. And I would have a chick perched on my shoulder when I was having the meetings. And like, they, they were like the highlight. It was like Elvis. They, and so if the chicks were not there, the students were like, where are the chicks? So I've become like a chicken mama during the pandemic. So that was one way I, I have been resilient. Anybody else willing to share? I've heard some so many fun things. Mm -hmm. And everyone should be able to talk. You can unmute yourself um, or and or turn on your video. I made it, I, I think I made it so everyone can. Um, so. And you can put it in the chat box too oh, if yeah. you're embarrassed. That's fine. No? All right. That's okay. But I just want you to take this moment though, to just acknowledge to yourself, like, how were you resilient? Um, I, don't, I don't know who is all on this call in terms of what you do professionally. I know you're all in education. I don't know if you're an administrator or if you're a teacher or what you do, but you're doing it. You're all working. That's resiliency to me. You're working during a global pandemic. You work during political unrest, like we've never seen in this. I mean, like amazing feats that you're educating children. 
And that those kids are like, in, a lot of them are in front of tablets doing that at home. Oh, school nurses, Whew. group of people. Thank you all so much. That is resilience. That's so awesome that there's school nurses here. So just like take a moment and just say, you know what, job well done to yourself. I don't know, I, I don't know about you, but I usually don't like walk around and say, damn, I did a good job today. But you know what, I want you to do that right now. Think about something that you did and just say to yourself, damn, I did a good job. All right, so let's think about this next thing. This one's a little, this one's harder. What have you found to be the biggest challenge during this time? And, and how have you coped with it? Um, I think for me, I felt like, especially when I was working from home, I felt like my house was just like a circus. I, you know, there's children, there's husbands, there's, patience. There's people that I have to take. Like, I, I felt like I was just spinning my wheels like a, you know, like a carnival person, you know. Um, it was a lot. And I love my family, but there was a lot of togetherness. And there still is. And it may have been a little too much, you know. So that to me was, that's a big, that's hard. And I am such an extrovert. You probably are not picking that up based on how I'm talking right now. But <laughs> I'm a little extrovert. And man, not being with my friends and being like a spaz is very hard for me. I'm a total spaz. I love to be out and be around people. I'm a chatty Kathy. Um, and how I coped with it was just every day telling myself that this is going to pass. This is not going to be forever. And I got creative. I zoomed like I'm so not tech. I'm like a dinosaur when it comes to that. I zoomed. It helped. I ran, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and I Again, I say to myself, it's okay not to be okay, and it's going to pass. I see something in the chat box. Here we go. What do we got? Motivation. I feel like I can't get motivated. That is, yes, absolutely. The, the feeling of paralysis during this time and just like, what's the point of it? Like, I'm wearing a mask. You can't see that I'm smiling at you. I, I mean, absolutely. And so I, well, I guess... Do you feel comfortable chatting how you've tried to deal with your motivation? Sure. Um, oh, I just good. There. Like, <laughs> I love it. Hello. I just feel like I can't, like, I just feel like everything's like in limbo. Like it's all on pause. Like we're just waiting for something. And I just, yeah. like nothing is motivating to me. I don't know how to, I don't know it's, how to get out of that. <laughs> it's absolutely hard. And I think, you know, not that it's a magic pill, but I forcing ourselves to be accountable to things. It's, it feels fake, but um, it's sort of, it's a trite saying, but I feel like it really is appropriate for now the fake in it till we make it. I mean, I know it's cheesy, but it's like so true. Um, I think forcing ourselves to do things, unfortunately, I think un being unmotivated part of this it's almost a it's a pandemic itself and I think that it's not going to feel better until you know <laughs> these are in the past and you can feel like it's not scary to go to the grocery store I mean um just treating yourself with grace and saying you know what I'm not motivated and it's okay that I feel that way and a lot of people feel that way right now and I'm just going to get done today what I can mm -hmm. and um, it's not going to be perfect. Your cat's butt might appear on the computer. <laughs> uh, you know, I have a kid that's a streaker. Thank God a patient never saw my streaking child. You know, I guess you just got to be nice to yourself and say, it's okay that I feel like a spud today. Mm -hmm. yes. I promise it will. But the important thing though, is that if the the unmotivation and that vegetation really takes over and you feel like it's beginning to get too much, reaching out and, and doing telehealth with someone I think would be really important. So just kind of monitor yourself, you know? Okay, thank you. And I'll share just kind of added to that too. There's been, I've seen a lot of, I think they mean well, but it can be harmful. Like these posts that are like, oh, if you didn't get this done during the pandemic, it means you never were motivated anyway, because they, this assumption that everyone just had all this free time, like, you know, not acknowledging that people are schooling their kids, or I have several friends who are healthcare workers, like they're yeah. not slow down. And so no. I that sort of mentality of like, you know, it's still like this, like 
productivity focus when at the end of the day, like we're literally experiencing a collective trauma, a once in a, Absolutely. Century, you know, during the midst of a, a heated election, racial unrest, like, you know, the pandemic on its own would have been stressful. Um, and then there's all these additional stressors. So I think to resisting that narrative of like, oh, well, now's the time you should have, you know, taken that class or lost that weight or done, you know, especially women, I think are pressured around these things. And um, I've really pushed back on that because I don't think it's helpful. And it, I agree. I agree. You know, right. Um, I see someone in the chat too. Yeah. My, my high schoolers keeping positive for them and keeping them motivated has been a challenge. Absolutely. This has gone on so long. And unfortunately, the worst part of it is, is like, we don't really know when the end is near and that living with that unknown is such a challenge. And I can't even imagine being a teenage brain trying to do this. I mean, puberty alone was enough to manage <laughs> and trying to figure out all this. It's of course they're down. Um, I'm, I'm glad you've had good family time. So that's a definite way to, to see the silver lining, but yeah, oh yeah, God, 14 and 16. Oh my God. Like, how do you figure out dating right now and the changes going on in your body? I mean, it's just nuts. I mean, it's all, it's, it's just heartbreaking. And I think, unfortunately, what we're seeing is the rise in the depression and the anxiety nationally is like tripled for all of our age ranges. And it's just, my biggest concern, and I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, is like, what is the, what is the long-term effect of all of this? You know, how collectively, you, you said it great, that it is, this is a trauma. What is this going to look like? And I think us, all of us on the call, and if, as much as we can, being champions for ourselves and others for mental health and mental health interventions is what is going to save this country, because I think the biggest consequences is going to be a mental health one. You know, yeah. Anybody else feel comfortable sharing big challenge and how they've they've dealt with it? Because then I, I I've got an I've got another one, another talking point. All right, maybe I do. Oh shoot, I was on the chat box. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, this is a fun one. So what do you guys do to decompress? So it's so important that going back to the schedule, I said like, you know, the, the nutrition and the exercise and that stuff. And I don't want to obviously over schedule you guys, but it's important to have those things, but also like taking care of you, uh, is, is just as important as responding to the work emails, um, or, you know, anything like that. So how do, and, and I feel like wellness is like this buzzword. And I feel like we all think it's like, it has to be yoga or it has to be deep breathing or, you know, something really Zen, it doesn't have to be. Wellness is so unique to each one of us and it's gotta be judgment free. Obviously, you know, as long as you're not engaging in something that is harmful to yourself. Okay, so there's my disclaimer with that. But I mean, like, if you need to watch on Netflix something embarrassing, like <laughs> do it. If you have to, what is that? Oh gosh, what was that? Love is blind. I think I watched that. Oh yeah. Watch it if you need to. I don't care. I never watched reality shows in my entire life until the pandemic. And I was like, this is a train wreck, but I love it. Well, you know, so so do things to decompress like that and don't judge yourself about it. And don't be embarrassed. And if it works, share it with somebody else because they're struggling too. Say, like I texted my friend, I'm watching the show. It's embarrassing, but you need to check it out. How else have people been decompressing during this time? Oh. 90 oh okay all right i'll have to check that is that on netflix or what is that on 90 um, it's, yeah it's on tlc and it's okay yeah it's a train wreck okay good i was gonna say is it is a hot mess yeah it's a hot mess <laughs> my mother and i we binge watched it and now we're caught up to the new ones they come on every sunday so i just somebody shows them. fabulous <laughs> but you know what i bet when you watch those in that moment your mind is like, it's, it's quiet. It's not, it's not focusing on all of this stuff. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's free. It gives you that space, right. It gives you freedom yeah. sort of. Right. Yeah. So I'm not really a TV watcher, um, okay. but I'd love to do puzzles. Oh, I love puzzles too. Yeah. We've been puzzling. Yeah. Yeah. And something that I have done lately just to help me decompress actually kind of all three of these things is 
my mom is in a nursing home and the, you know, they're all locked up in these rooms all by themselves. So I have started to be creative, bring my, bring, bring my creative spirits back and make handmade cards. And it doesn't even have to be from anybody, but I go and take a bunch of cards like once a month and drop them off at the nursing home and just have them put them in the, in the, um, their mail mailboxes. And it's just fun to hear my mom talk about, oh, we got a surprise card today. And she doesn't even know that I'm doing it. So it's Aww. just kind of fun. So I'm trying to do something for other people to bring light into their life a little bit, just to help them too. I love That's great. That. I love that. I love that so much. So I'm um, giving to others is great. I spent like, I, I remember uh, one person shared at one of the talks I did uh, at SLU when toilet paper was like, you know, gold, like that they shared toilet paper with their neighbors when they scored toilet paper. I mean, can you believe that we like toilet paper was a thing I'm, <laughs> on some of this stuff? And I'm just like, my God. But yeah, absolutely. It was a wonderful suggestion. I've rediscovered my love of reading fiction. Um, oh yeah, I was a reader growing up, and I swear I tell people that I think college and graduate school kind of beat it out of me for a while. And I, because I am fortunate that I was able to work from home, and I don't work in healthcare, so I and I don't have children, so I was, you know, I was one of the people who did find myself with more time. And I rediscovered reading and that has been, you know, I just, I had not been able to read really for like two or three years, you know, where I enjoyed it. So I've been doing a lot of fiction. I mean, the local bookstores are getting a lot of my money, right? That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. And I hope you don't judge it. Like I read trash sometimes too. Oh like yeah. Trash mysteries, trash romance, whatever. Gar garbage in, garbage mm -hmm. out. Quality stuff too. But you know, you got to read garbage too. The, the, you know, sometimes the escape is what you. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. You know, especially now more than ever is just allowing ourselves kind of a time to not be thinking about it because I, one thing I didn't mention too, I think it's really another tip is to think about how much media you're consuming in a given day and really limiting that um, to an hour or less. I mean, even an hour to me is too much, but really trying to you know, kind of not look too much at it. Um, especially like early on when we were facing this, I know like people had like CNN constantly on like their computers. And I mean, you know, obviously we need to stay informed as citizens and such, but, you know, I think that sometimes we get in that trap of like meaning to know everything constantly. And then you're like, why do I feel so stressed out today? Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes people are like, oh my God, I was looking at media all day long, you know. Um, I will tell you a big way I've made it. I, I have started limiting my time on, especially Facebook and Twitter. Those tend to be, mm -hmm. um, of course, you don't just get information. You get information filtered through everyone's opinions. Uh, right. You know, and most of us, I think, have the people we follow. Like we have these sort of echo chambers of people who we already agree with. But I started limiting like my the doom scrolling right on social media yeah. and each morning I listen to like a news podcast my favorite right now is the NPR up first because it's like mm -hmm. a 15 minute snapshot I can still stay informed you know because mm -hmm. doom scrolling like it's just this constant fight or flight trigger because everything absolutely great quote today um Ariana Huffington said when everything is urgent nothing is and we're just getting this constant trigger of fight or flight Mm -hmm. always do anything about what we're immediately reading about, you know, and so I have found that limiting the social media, but listening to pot, you know, curating a list of podcasts from news sources that you know and trust. Um, Absolutely. It's been really helpful to me. Yeah. And, you know, um, one thing that I would suggest too is that, you know, if, if you find that you're really struggling and you can't really put your hand on what is stressing you out, sometimes just journaling, observing yourself for a week and not with judgment, not changing anything, but just writing down in a given day, like what everything you did and what the emotions were at the end of the day can really be eye-opening. And you look at it and you're like, um, you know, gosh, it looks like 
this really, when I did this on all these days, it made me feel a certain way. It's like you're running an anthropological study of yourself. Because if you're mm -hmm. like, I don't know why I'm feeling so anxious or depressed, you have to do some detective work, right? And, and doing a, a week or a two week study of yourself is super helpful. Um, I had a student that I, I, I do this a lot with the med students because sometimes their insight, they are like, Lauren, I don't know why I'm feeling this way. I'm like, well, you studied from 8 a.m. to midnight with no breaks three days during the week. I mean, so, but they didn't even realize it. So sometimes we're doing things that we're not even cognizant of and that act of writing it down and then looking at it, you're like, oh my God, I didn't do X, Y, or Z. No wonder I feel crummy, you know? So just a suggestion if you're having trouble figuring out why you're struggling beyond obviously that we're living during a pandemic. <laughs> You know what I mean? Beyond the obvious things. <laughs> Beyond the obvious, right. Love that. Well, I, I certainly, um, you know, want to be mindful of time. I know that, you know, we only have like about nine or so minutes left. I, I'm going to end my um, screen share. Let's see if I can, I forget how to do this. Let's stop share. There we go. Okay. Um, and, you know, I am happy to after this talk, like I said, if you guys can communicate forward to this organization, you know, other topics for that last talk that you guys want to have, um, certainly um, we could do that. But next time we're going to talk about different ways of, like I said, relaxation techniques. I will teach some mindfulness and meditation and such in that next talk. Um, but certainly I have um, enjoyed this, this space with you guys. Um, I really love that, that you guys, um, you know, definitely participated. It's always nice to, to have an engaged audience. And I just really appreciate that you tuned in today. Um, and I, I really am thankful to the, that I've had the opportunity to, to be here with you. Thank you so much, Lauren. We appreciate you being here. And thanks everyone for joining. Yes, so I will, I will see you all next month. Thank you. And I, I wish you all well and good health and safety. Um, Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad that, that this was helpful for you. Um, you all take care of yourselves and uh, you guys do amazing work in education. The world would not function without you guys. Um, so, so thank you so much. My heart goes out to each and